Hey folks, Lana here, coming at you with some thoughts from the Dance of Anger book by Harriet Lerner. Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <clears throat> Should have cleared my throat beforehand. <laughs> um, ah, the thought that I want to um, share from the book mainly revolves around um, relationships and how we think of ourselves in relation to the relationship. <laughs> so Harriet um, talks about marriage, and you could apply this to any long-term relationship, as being a, a balance between I and we, or uh, independence and autonomy, versus and, and personal responsibility, versus closeness and responsibility for each other. So basically independence and like, us as separate entities and um, and then us as like a unit and what we do to support each other and um, exist together <laughs> and be close. And <clears throat> she talks about how often conflicts arise when we kind of start to forget that we are separate people in a relationship together and what that actually means. And for women, Harriet talks about how women um, <clears throat> often take on this role of, you know, the supporter, the caretaker, and the selfless martyr who loses themselves to a relationship or to, like, child rearing or whatever. Um, and how that can... Um, yeah, when that happens, I mean, resentment can build up. Um, but it can also teach us to, to be uncomfortable asserting our wants and needs, especially in conflict. Because when we do that, doesn't matter who you are in the, part, in the partnership, when we assert ourselves and our needs and the fact that at the end of the day we are individuals, capable of making our own decisions, whether our partners like it or not, it reminds us of that separateness. And we instinctively don't like that feeling, especially in traditional relationships. That reminder that at the end of the day, we are two separate entities. We can walk away from each other. We don't necessarily owe each other anything. Or we can't control each other. Or that we are not bound to each other by obligation <laughs> are and even saying that I'm like okay well <laughs> you are bound legally if you're married but you can break that bond um and obligations sure if you have children house mortgage <laughs> there are obligations but really what she's getting at is is that you are primarily responsible for yourself you have yourself to answer to, and no one can make you do anything. Ultimately, you're probably gonna, they're probably gonna need to have some amount of your consent uh, in for you to participate in an action or responsibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that's this is all tough, right? being clear about what we want and need, even if we think our partner might not agree or it might conflict with one of their priorities. But it's one of the most important things that we can do in conflict. Um, often, <sighs> Harriet Lerner talks about how often fights and disagreements can err on the petty side or the surface level side because we are actively avoiding addressing the deeper real issue. And so she talks about, you know, taking a beat before addressing an issue. If you're feeling really heated and emotional about something, don't take that moment to address it. Wait until you're feeling a little more balanced and clear. Um, and then actually have the discussion or the disagreement around what is at your core bugging you and 
she encourages to approach those conversations not as a you're doing this and it's a problem for me so stop it <laughs> she encourages us to take personal responsibility over our feelings and our needs and wants and approach with this is something that i'm experiencing this is an issue for me because xyz and you know i'm wondering how we can solve this together or um or maybe it's even just an action that us ourselves need to take and our partner just has to kind of deal with it um she she uses a bunch of different examples but there's an example of um a woman wants to attend a i think it's a some kind of workshop i want to say it's a personal um like self-defense class and the husband doesn't think it's a good idea i think it'll be like a waste of money or something and so she um initially puts up a fight but knows that the husband's gonna disagree and then submits to his differing opinion um but she's resentful obviously because when we decide not to do something because of somebody else like it doesn't stop us from wanting to do it likely so we've betrayed our own whoops uh, we betrayed our own wants and needs and we've put someone else before us which generally doesn't feel great <laughs> and so Werner talks about how uh, she encourages this woman to you know dig deeper as to is this something that you've been doing a lot um take a stand for something knowing that you're just gonna submit anyways to your husband's um wishes and you know why don't we instead take personal responsibility if you really want to do this then do it and so the wife basically said hey i really want to do this workshop Think it's really important to me and my personal development i know that you don't agree um and that's okay it means i will be away you know one night a week and so i have scheduled the babysitter to come by and take care of, like and to watch over the kids while i'm gone so she didn't even like put anything extra on the on the partner but she made it clear that she was going to stay true to what she wanted to do and I think in time, the husband, it, there was a whole, like, they had a, a lot of issues where basically, like, anyway, they weren't living their own, set, like, their own lives um, in a healthy way. Um, but that introduced just the understanding that, oh, like, my wife is her own person and should be able to decide if she wants to do something or not. And I think he started stepping in and... Um, watching the kids that one night and and he started going like golfing with his friends like on a one day a week something like that but i think this has become convoluted <laughs> but something i really appreciate about my relationship and i think that works really well is that we are both acutely aware that we are our own people and that we are going to grow and change and want new and different things as time progresses and we have a commitment to each other to not hold each other back from doing those things even if it maybe makes life inconvenient for us um we are not so dependent on each other that if greg is gone two nights a week that i won't know what to do with myself you know what i mean like i've got shit I can do. <laughs> um, when you have kids, you know, that becomes a little bit of a trickier situation, especially because child, uh, child care is not cheap. But I think there's ways you can balance, um, balance things in a better way so you can each continue to fill your cups in the way that you would like to. And sometimes that will involve togetherness time. But yeah, I think it's important for your own self-esteem and ego and yeah, confidence 
and to the excitement and interest of the relationship to remind yourselves that like your own company is great and like you need to continue to grow as your own individual that will only be a benefit to yourself and to others and your relationship ultimately and yeah I think that's just one of the interesting like examples of the confines of monogamy sometimes <laughs> that we think when you're in a relationship that's all you are you are only in relationship and and in only in relationship to another person but you're also in relationship to yourself and that is something that we forget so so much especially as women and so it's something that I forget and something that I feel like I was raised not to necessarily be aware of um I mean I had the benefit of being a bit self-absorbed and that I was an athlete and I have yeah, there's a lot of focus that goes into your body and your training but the good values of being a woman in this society as often revolves around removing yourself <laughs> and your existence <laughs> and taking the back seat and um, putting others ahead of you. But I think it's important for everyone to have a relationship with yourself before your relationship with anybody else. There's a reason why there's all those quotes about you can't love another person without loving yourself first. Yeah. And wherever there's that fear or that discomfort probably means you need to do that thing. So in a conflict, <laughs> if you're worried about stating your stance um, and your needs or your boundaries, um, that's probably something you do need to do and you need to risk that the other person's not going to like it and you have to decide where you go from there. Is that a deal breaker or is that something that we can navigate around? Yeah. <sighs> a bit rambly, but I hope you enjoyed. I just think this was probably one of the most important concepts to me that came out of this book. Um, there's some good quick tips that I might share in a separate video of its own on how to approach conflict. But I think the core was just like, remember your own power. <laughs> Be clear on your wants and needs. State them. And then and take personal responsibility for managing your own emotions in life and wants and needs. And don't expect someone else to do that for you. Um, ultimately, it's nice if your partner is supportive of what you want and need, but um, they might not see it. And your job is to advocate for yourself and to always remember that relationship with yourself. And yeah, if you're stronger as an individual, it only serve the relationship. So, okay, with that, I'm wrapping this up. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and um, yeah, go fight smarter. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you in the next one, folks. Bye.